I'm gonna share with you the calibration settings to use black frame insertion on this LG C1 using that Windows 11 HDR calibration app. I can now nail the settings to get the best visibility on the shadows, to get the right luminance on the mid-tones, and you know, basically the best results we can get uh, using black frame insertion on this LG C1. So let me show you real quick how it looks. Uh, it's just fantastic. I mean, it's perfect. <laughs> I've been comparing without black frame insertion uh, with the calibrated settings that I share with you and trying to match that same luminance on the mid-tones and on the shadow details and I nailed the settings. This is perfect. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you that. So you see here on the cave, everything is visible on the shadows. This is Kina, awesome game. Everything is visible here on the shadows. On the video, this might be looking blown out because it's too bright, but this is a beautiful golden uh, color here that is popping. It's awesome. And I am using Motion Pro High. Let me let me show you that. We go here to settings, game optimizer, and I am using Motion OLED Motion Pro High. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about here. And I'm at 60 frames, so at 60 frames we do get some flickering. So I'm gonna talk about specifically what is black frame insertion, Motion Pro, what is motion interpolation. What I'm talking about here. If you're new to the channel and you, you maybe you don't know what is this guy talking about what is motion resolution what is black frame insertion what is motion interpolation what is that i mean with oh it gets blurry when you move the camera i'm going to explain you that at the end let me first share with you the settings i am using on this calibration app so we need to use dynamic tone mapping to use these uh, settings okay and here's what i'm gonna do we click here, get started. Of course, you know, you go to HDR settings, you turn on HDR, turn on auto HDR, and you go to calibration, you open a website, it's going to, it's going to uh, have a link to the Microsoft Store, you download this, uh, this app, it's called HDR calibration, Windows HDR calibration app, and you just click here, get started. So on this first, screen we have minimum luminance okay so this is the black level of the TV so we're gonna max this out <laughs> and what this is going to do what this is going to do basically it is going to move the luminance of the game so let me explain you. imagine this is the range this is the range uh, the you know the, the HDR range of the game okay so what we are doing here is we are moving that lower end of the gray scale up okay and the reason why we want and we need to do that when we use black frame insertion is because black frame insertion is going to reduce the peak brightness in 300 nits and a little bit more but it's also, not only that, it's also going to affect the EOTF tracking. So we need to raise the mid-tones. And it's also going to affect, of course, the shadow detail. So by increasing this, uh, this minimal luminance, by increasing this to one, just like one nit. Yeah, this is one nit. So by increasing this to one, what we are doing is... We are coming out of black at a higher luminance level. So we are still going to get perfect black. And I tested that in all the games already. We still see perfect all the black, so zero nits. But we are going to come out of black more aggressively, brighter. And that's exactly what we need to use black frame insertion. And I'm going to show you Batman's face uh, which is a very sh very dark shadow detail and you will see that the Batman's face is perfectly visible now. So now by doing this, by increasing this, we are also now reducing a little bit 
the peak brightness because we are also going to move the midtones higher and we also need that for black film insertion because black film insertion is affecting that EOTF tracking so we need higher visibility on the midtones so by doing that by having a, an by, by having a brighter image overall we are also reducing the peak brightness of the highlights okay so the, as a consequence what we are doing here is we are making HDR SDR we are compressing the range dramatically so this is not going to look like HDR in terms of the luminance but it's going to give you the visibility that you need to use black frame insertion so on the next screen so we are maxing out this brightness and on the next screen we are gonna use 980 okay and the reason is by selecting here 980 the games are going to try to output 1000 nits 1026 nits so we are going to use dynamic tone mapping so by doing that we are also going to get a brighter overall mid tones so the mid tones are going to be brighter than if we select here 780 okay so we select here 980 and and we select 980 on the next screen and we just save that and the results are fantastic and I'm gonna show you at the end of the video I'm gonna turn off the lights put the phone closer to the screen and show you this game and then I'm going to open Batman Arkham Knight so you see how good is the visibility of Batman's face on the main menu which is uh, a very very dark shadow detail so let me explain you now what I'm talking about here what is black frame insertion what is motion interpolation what I mean when I when I talk about motion clarity or motion resolution when you look at a static image so you're playing the game and you don't move the camera you can see all the details the image looks sharp as soon as you move the camera as soon as you do this everything looks blurry okay and some people might think Oh, that's normal. <laughs> that's just the way it is. Why? Because you've never seen a CRT monitor. Maybe you're too young. You've never seen one of those huge uh, televisions or CRT monitors. Or maybe you've never played a game on those monitors. Or you've never seen a plasma TV. That's why I love my plasma TV so much. So that is not normal. When you move the camera, if everything looks blurry, that is not more normal. So most people get used to play like this. They just move the mouse and do this. So in that way, they are avoiding, they are completely avoiding that blurriness because you have a sharp image here, you have a sharp, 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 but you are not, you are not enjoying the transitions. You know, you're, you're trying, you're avoiding the transitions. You are not doing this, okay? Because you don't want to, because it looks blurry it would give you a headache but that is not normal if you move the camera and everything looks blurry that is not normal okay so what I say motion clarity motion resolution what I mean is this same resolution this same uh, details static details to retain to retain that quality when you move the camera so it doesn't matter that you move the camera so imagine you can see this quality you move the camera and you still see the same quality it doesn't matter <laughs> that you move the camera that's what a CRT that's what is how a CRT looks like a CRT monitor you move the camera it doesn't matter <laughs> it looks exactly the same as you have a static image that is awesome and that's what we lost with this sample and hold displays and the reason is it is called persistent blur the problem with sample and hold displays is that you have so for example we have here 60 Hertz okay the, the game is running at 60 Hertz 60 frames per second so what that means is the game is refreshing the image 60 times per second so you have 60 images per second so the more images you have the more motion clarity you get 
so you see better when you move the camera. So the problem with this sample and hold displays is that the image stays on the screen too long, almost until the new one comes. Okay, so what that uh, that is a problem because the image that is currently on the screen is recorded on your retina. The retina of our eyes, they kind of record that image. So if you look at the sun or a very bright object like a bulb, like a light bulb, and you close your eyes, you can still see the sun or that light bulb. And that's because the retina is recording that image because it was too bright. So the same happened. You see an image, it is recorded on the retina, and when the new one comes, the older image, the older frame is still there. So by having two at the same time on the retina, that looks blurry. It's like having double image. So that's the problem. So black frame insertion, what tries to do is to clear that image. So you have an image, then you have a black frame, so you clear that persistent blur. So when the new one comes, you can see it and it doesn't look blurry, okay? It is more complicated than that. It's, it, it is more complicated than just inserting a black frame, okay? But that is just a way to explain it that, that it is a little bit more understandable. So what is motion interpolation? It's the same idea. Instead of inserting a black frame, it's inserting another frame it's a fake frame it's an ai generated frame so we have 60 real frames right now on the game what the tv can do the tv can guess an image in between those 60 frames and give you 120 frames so by having 120 frames we have more image we still have that problem that persistent blur but by having more images it looks a little bit better when you move the camera okay it looks with a little bit better motion clarity so it is better in my opinion you get a better result by using black frame insertion but the downside is you lose peak brightness and you affect that HDR you basically lose HDR because this this monitors uh, these displays are not bright enough okay so this LG C1 can combine both this LG C1 can do motion interpolation so it can create that fake frame and on top of that it can do black frame insertion so we have 60 frames per second the TV can give you another 16 fr frames per second so now you have 120 so on those 120 frames per second the TV can do black frame insertion so you basically see 240 okay so when you move the camera it looks like you're playing at 240 frames per second so the reason why a plasma TV, for example, looks so good even at 60 frames per second is because the plasma TV at 60 hertz, what it's doing is giving you 60 images in one second. So it's 60 images in one second, but each frame, each image is being turning on. The, the pixels are turning on and off. 10 times okay so the image is basically if this tv has built-in black frame insertion so the technology already is not black frame insertion but it has so basically imagine <laughs> it's difficult to explain imagine the tv has 60 images per second and each image each frame is doing this on and off on and off on and off 10 times so the eyes are are not so there's no persistent blur because the image is being turned on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off. So your eyes are able to appreciate the motion clarity because it doesn't, the image doesn't get like, it doesn't stay on the retina. When the new one comes, it's already clear because the image is not staying on the screen like all the time. It's doing this super fast. That's why the Plasma TV at 60 hertz, 60 frames per second, it looks like 120, okay? That's why this channel is called Plasma TV for Gaming because I wish I had a, a 4K 60, 4K 120 would be even better. 
4K 120 Hertz uh, Plasma TV, it would look like 240. It's like having DLSS 3.0 built into the display. That's exactly what it is. The Plasma TV has DLSS 3.0 frame creation built into it. <laughs> okay. It's even better than that because you have no artifacts. Okay. So that's what it is. Uh, let me show you the game now. Let me turn off the lights. I'm going to show you this game for a moment. And then I'm going to show you Batman Arkham Knight. Let me get the, the phone closer to the screen. So you can see it better. And let me close the, the door. Okay. Let me move the camera. Okay. It's still blowing out, blowing out the highlight. But you see everything looks awesome here. The light is still coming through that door and affecting the visibility. But look at that. It's just perfect. When we go out, and you might see a black frame coming up and down. And that's because of that Motion Pro. See? See that dark, dark black? You see the black frame going up and down? That's black frame insertion. Of course, that's, that depends on the speed of the recording. And we don't see that in person. You don't see that. You see a little bit of flickering at 60. But if you can play at 100 or 120, there's no flickering. And when you move the camera, it's just perfection. It looks amazing. Well, let me show you now uh, Arkham Knight. Let me open Batman Arkham Knight. And see how it looks. So you see Batman's face, which is a very uh, subtle shadow detail. So if we can see Batman's face, we are for sure getting perfect visibility. So that light coming through the door is, I cannot avoid that, is, is the morning. It's the early morning here. So let me get the, the phone closer to the screen. Okay, that's better. We just need to see Batman's face. And that's going to prove, that's going to prove my point. That this is now looking spectacular. Okay. Take a look at that Bas Batman's face. Let me get the phone on my hand. I'm gonna show it to you. Look at that. Perfectly visible. This is just perfect, man. This is the best results I've ever had with black frame insertion. The visibility here of Batman is exactly the same visibility as without black frame insertion. I tested this extensively. Without black frame insertion and with perfect settings with HGIG and I and I matched that. I was able to match that 